Hello. Um, so, again, today's video is just to finish up Chapter 5 of HVAC. So, um, I'm just going to go ahead and go through uh, what is going to be the last um, few example problems of the chapter. Now, this video is probably, you're probably going to hear uh, an annoying tapping as I go through this video because of the fact that the pen's um, movement on the screen is going to be picked up by the microphone. Uh, I try to see if I can avoid that, but it doesn't seem like I can, so um, just try to bear with me through that. So the example problem reads, a wall um, is 12 foot wide by 8 feet high and has an overall heat transfer coefficient of 0.1 BTU per hour per square Fahrenheit. The wall contains a solid door in the given dimensions dimensions of the solid door are given, and a single glass window, along with the dimensions also. Assuming parallel heat flow paths uh, for the wall, door, and window, find the overall thermal resistance and overall heat transfer coefficient for this wall. Assume under conditions. So, uh, if you go ahead, um, I'm going to go ahead and draw what I call a fifth grade schematic. There's a door, there's my window. Not in any way to scale. Eight feet by twelve feet. They give you in the problem statement the overall thermal conductance of the wall. We do not know what it is for the door, and we do not know what it is for the window. Uh, we're eventually going to have to find the overall heat transfer coefficient, overall thermal resistance. So to do this, we're going to also need to know the area. Um, we have the area of the wall is going to be uh, that 12 by 8 subtract out the area of the window. Which again, if you go ahead and do that, it's a 60 by 30 inch window, which equates to 12.5 square feet. So we subtract that away from the wall, and we can also go ahead and get the overall thermal, or the um, overall area of the door as well. 80 by 32, convert it into square feet, gives us 1720 square feet. So we get that. The wall is about 67 square feet, the window is 12.5, and the door is 17.8. Uh, so as you can tell, the heat flows into the page or out of the page. Um, so that means that we have parallel heat flow going on. Uh, the next thing to try to do is to go ahead and uh, turn to Chapter 5 of your book. And there are going to be some tables in there that are going to give you the thermal properties of windows uh, and doors. Um, windows can be found on table uh, 55A. Um, it, it's, in, it's a table that encompasses uh, several different types of windows. And you can see them being separated first off into different categories. So if you look down on the table, you'll see something called single glazing, double glazing, triple glazing. Uh, a glazing just means a pane. So a one pane window would be single glazing. A double pane window would be, or a double glazing would be a two pane window, and so forth and so on. Uh, it gives you options to look um, at the conductivity, or the, I'm sorry, the overall U factor, which is the thermal conductance, through the center of the glass, through the edge of the glass. Uh, you're looking at operable windows that have, um, that are um, aluminum with and without thermal breaks, uh, wood vinyl siding. So it just kind of gives you an idea of the different thermal properties of all the different windows. And for the windows that are uh, double glazing, and triple glazing and looks at also the airspace between the panes and what type of gas and how far the space is. So uh, you can use um, you can use that table to find the thermal properties of more or less any type of um, any type of window. Um, moving on from that, you can look also uh, for the table five eight gives you the thermal coefficients of doors. Um, in this case, it's a wooden door. 
solid wooden door measured at 80 by 32. Um, solid wooden door, you can go ahead to your tables and find that relatively simply. It's 1 and 3 eighths uh, inch thick, so a solid door 1 and 3 eighths should give you uh, 0 0.39 BTU per hour foot squared Fahrenheit. So one door is again the table five eight. That's the top portion of the table. You look for one three eight inch thick solid door, solid um, wood door. You should find uh, the third, so third selection down. There's no stored door. It gives you 0.39. So that's for the door. For the window, I mean, same same deal. You go to the uh, uh, go to single glazing all the way to the top on page 144, table five five a. You should see um, the fact that this window will, uh, should find an, an overall thermal uh, conductance of um, 1.27 BTU per hour per square Fahrenheit. Okay, so now that we have our Conductance is we can go ahead and try to find what the problem is asking for, which is the overall uh, thermal conductivity, the th thermal conductance. We're just going to go with the overall thermal conductance. So I'm going to go ahead and say next slide. Now, if I look at the heat going through the page, I get my total heat transfer is going to be the heat transfer through the wall plus that through the window plus that through the door. If I add those all up, I get my overall thermal con conductance times the total area times delta T, right? Delta T being on the, the difference in temperature between each side of the wall equals the overall resistance of the wall, or a thermal conductance of the wall times the area of the wall times delta T, plus the same thing for the window, plus the same thing for the door. Delta T doesn't change. It's the same for um, all these cases. And so what you have is a formula that says that the overall thermal conductance, again, this is in, uh, for uh, I, uh, material that's in parallel with each other, it is going to be the sum of the conductance of each individual material times its perspective area. So all that divided by the total area. If you do the math, you should end up with about 0.3 BTU per hour foot squared Fahrenheit, with a total area of 12 by 8 or 96 square feet. Okay, I hope that, I hope that makes sense. It's just uh, basically looking at the overall thermal conductance in terms of area. Okay, um, moving on from there, there's one more example problem which uh, basically looks at the total resistance of a certain space, um, meaning that, let's say I have a knee space or an attic, what would be the total thermal resistance of heat flowing in from all directions? Um, let's start by looking at this example here. Here, let's say we have a roof structure, a wall, and a ceiling. I have heat coming in from each of these surfaces, right? So through the roof structure and through the wall, and then once it goes into the room, the heat flows through the ceiling. Right, so we get that the total heat flow we get that the total heat flow through the room plus the wall equals the sum total of the heat through the room and the wall. So we get again like the prior problem the Overall, the overall thermal conductance times the total, the overall area equals the same thing for the for the um, for the roof plus the same thing for the wall. That equates to a total thermal resistance of one over the sum of the conductances. Again, understanding that the conductances are corrected for its associated area. Um, so, 
the best thing to do is just probably look at an example problem. So let's go ahead and uh, get to the next slide and we'll look at an example problem with this. The example problem reads, consider the knee space shown in the figure below. Um, I guess the figure is not really showing up so well on this uh, on this video. Let me see if I can get it to show up. Doesn't look like the I must have deleted it somehow. Okay. Well, I'll re I'll go ahead and redraw it. Hopefully, you guys have it have it there. But basically, we have an attic. Yeah, drawing the best attributes here. So I'm gonna do my best. So bear with me. So we have in this house house structure um, what is considered heated space. Here a knee space in the house where it measures three feet by eight feet in its triangle. So the statement in the problem says consider the knee space shown in that figure. Assume that the knee space is 20 feet long, so 20 feet into the page. The walls and a roof surrounding the knee space all have an overall heat transfer coefficient of 0.09 BTU per hour foot squared Fahrenheit. Uh, assuming an outdoor temperature of 0 Fahrenheit and an indoor heated airspace temperature of 70 Fahrenheit, determine the temperature of the knee space. So if I take this knee space and I redraw it, you redraw it, you'll see a total of um, Uh, five, one, two, three, five surfaces, right? So let's go ahead and, and number them. But surface one, which is the back of this knee space, so surface one would be right here on the diagram. If you see in a 3D diagram, it's sort of the back of the triangle. Uh, surface four is going to be the bottom part. Uh, surface two is this um, front surface. So that would be right here, surface two. Surface three, which includes two surface threes, would be um, the sides of the triangle. We have an outdoor temperature of zero Fahrenheit and an indoor temperature in the attic and heated spaces of 70 Fahrenheit, right? So 70 Fahrenheit in all these uh, in all these spaces. So the problem asking is, based on that, what would be the total temperature of the knee space? So Thermal and heat transfer, you should know that the sum of the heat in has to, sum the, uh, has to be the sum of the heat out. So if we look at what's going in, since the inside is being heated, uh, it only makes sense that surfaces 1, right, surface 1 and 4, as I'm circling here, are the parts of the house that are sharing a wall with an interior space. So that would be the heat in. So we have U of surface 1 times this area multiplied by the temperature difference between the inside and the outside, plus the same thing for surface 4. Equals the sum of the heat out. So that would be the. So we have here all, uh, we're going to look at the heat out, which is going to be the uh, walls that share, the walls that are, um, which are the walls that are sharing a, um, excuse me, that really distracted me. Okay, my phone's unplugged. Equals the sum of the heat out, which is basically all the heat out is going to be the surfaces that are exposed to the outside. So that would be surface two.
and surface 3. I multiply surface 3 by 2 because there are two surface 3s. Right? Um, if we do all the math, all the delta t should cancel out more or less because they're all equal to each other. And you're left with basically uh, ua for surface ua for surface 1 and 4 equals ua for surface 2 and 3. So if you do that math, you get that. Well, sorry, the, the temperatures don't cancel out, but basically what you're trying to solve for is the temperature. Um, the temperature of outside. So let me go ahead and change that. So we have the outside, the inside temperature U U one A one U four A four is the difference between the inside temperature and the temperature in the knee space. So you're trying to solve for T sub n, and for the out for the walls that share surface of the outside, which is um, surface two and three, it's the difference between the outdoor temperature and the knee space. So if you do all the math and you solve you should, um, for the knee space temperature, you should get 32.7 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, that ends this chapter. I apologize for the distractions. I hope that this problem um, made sense. Uh, if it doesn't, you can always email me, and I'd be more than happy to, uh, to, to answer your questions. Um, I will also include the copy of this um, completed um, uh, notes in the course folder. You should be able to find it there at this point. Thank you for your patience, and uh, I hope this video was able to be not perfect, but I hope it was able to at least uh, finish off the content in an understandable way. Look forward to seeing you guys on Monday. Bye-bye.